welcome to epg padasala i am dr k mahavali rajan from department of ancient indian history culture and archaeology vishwabharati university shantiniketan the subject indian culture the paper socio and cultural history of india from earliest to 1707 ad the modules socio and cultural life during the chalukyas and rashtrakutas before introducing the topic concerned in south indian history the chalukyas and rashtrakuta contributed much for the development of society for cultural development many social change took place many cultural development we can see in the both the dynastic period they were controlled the the river belt on the basis of the their political power all field development we can find both the dynastic period the learning objectives of the present modules to know about the social life of south india during the chalukyas and rashtrakutas to know about the caste system particularly about the four varna system to understand about the inter caste relationship to understand about the muslim and the other mahajanas marriage system and position of women to know about the dress and food and drinks of the people to understand the religious practices and other the cultural practices of the chalukyas and rashtrakutas to know about the education and literary tradition of both the dynasties in introduction part it is important to understand the both the dynastic and its historical development the chalukyas and rashtrakuta rule marks an important landmark in the history of south india the political atmosphere in south indian region shifted from minor kingdom to great empire with the dominance of the chalukyas cholas rashtrakutas and other regional powers these kingdoms took control and consolidated the entire river valleys of the deccan regions these all the southern indian the great powers they controlled the political administration as well as the they promoted for the the cultural development of the the deccan regions in the rise of these great powers we saw the a birth of many things in the birth of efficient administration the emergence of new caste and communities the growth of new trade and commerce cultural developments in the form of new architectural styles we can also see the royal support to the development of kannada literature and languages we also saw the birth of telugu literature under the patronage of eastern chalukya dynasty mostly both the chalukyas and the rashtrakutas they promoted the religious tradition as well as the the cultural value of the deccan regions for understanding the socio and cultural life of the chalukyas and rashtrakutas we have large number of the sources both literature as well as the the foreign sources on the basis of the literary and foreign sources as well as the the epigraphical sources we can understand the the social practices and the cultural value of the the both the dynasties information recording the socio cultural activities during the chalukyas and rashtrakuta times come from mostly literature inscription and from the notes of 
Chinese, Greek, and Arab travelers. The Aikol inscription of Chalukyas state that the general attitude of the society was unorthodox towards all communities. Chinese travelers Huan Swang visited India during the reign of Puligas in second and described the social life and manner of the people during the Chalukya dynasty. Travelers from the Arab and other Muslim countries like Al Biruni, Sulaiman, Al Mashudi portrayed the socio and cultural practices of the Rashtrakuta period. On the basis of the, the available source material of the, both the dynasty, we can understand the, the social life of the people of that particular period. Now we discuss about the social life of the people of both dynasties. The social life of people South India during the Chalukyas and Rashtravada was religion based. They followed traditional Hindu ways of life in society with liberal attitude. In social hierarchy and religious influence, the Brahmins occupied highly respectable position. The Chalukyas and Rashtravada rulers patronized all the religion and did not impose restriction on socio and religious practices of other religious ideas. This policy of religious toleration helped towards the spread of Buddhism and Jainism in South India, especially during the Chalukyas and Rashtrakuta period. During the Chalukyas and Rashtrakuta period, the Jainism and Buddhism become flourished. They become the popular religion of South India. Both the rulers extended their royal support for the promotion of Buddhism and Jainism. Now we discuss about the caste system during the, both the dynasties. There are several chronicles mentioned about the, the caste system of Hindu social order. The accounts of the foreigns mention 16 castes including four basic castes or the four varnas of Brahmins, Chatriyas, Vaisyas and Shudra Varna. These four principal castes are referred to in the records of the period as Nalgujati. Besides of the four principal castes, the lower section of the people considered as the untouchable, they were treated as worse than the, the animal. Though mostly the untouchable community, they were treated as the lowborn, they always suppressed and oppressed by the, the upper community of the, the Hindu system. In the four Varna system, the Brahmins were occupied the important place. In the hierarchical order, they were in the topmost in the social hierarchy. The Brahmins were occupied an important place and played a vital role in the social life of the Chalukyas and Rashtrakuta period. There was many Gotras and Pravaras among the Brahmin groups. Besides the Gotras and Pravaras, the Brahmins seems to have characterized name according to their occupation and modes of life. Alburuni says that when Brahmin is busy with the service of one fire, he is called as Isthin. If he serves three fire, he is called as Agni Gotrin. If he besides offer an offering to the fire, he is called as Dikshita. In addition, the contemporary records refer to such Brahmanic surnames as Avastin, Sarman, Trivedin, Sadurvedin, Mishra and the other title as the Pandida. Mostly on the basis of the, the early scripture, the lawful occupation of the Brahmins were performing sacrifices Apart from the, the studying the Vedas and teaching Vedas, giving and receiving gifts from the royal and other individuals, 
Mostly the lawful occupation is studying and teaching Veda to the others. To address the fact that Alburuni notes that the universal duty of the Brahmins throughout his whole life are works for pity, giving alms and receiving them. They occupied hereditary administrative posts in the Chalukyas and Rashtrakuta period. In addition, Brahmins also involved in some cases in agricultural activities and trade and commerce activities. The people of medical profession were treated with regret and inscription mentions some Brahmins doctors were in the Chalukya and Rashtrakuta period. Now we discuss about the, the Chatriyas. They were in the, the second category of the, the four Varna system. The Chatriya belonged to royal and noble families. Their usual occupation was that of arms. There was no dearth of the Chatriyas devoted to letters. According to Alberini, they could study and teach Veda but they were not permitted to teach the Vedas to the others. It appears from the Prasharashmidi that the Chatriyas also had taken to agriculture activities. Mostly the Chatriyas were the royal people. They enjoyed the political power. They controlled the political administrative activity of a state. Next we discuss about the, the Vaisya community. The Vaisyas were the powerful the merchant community. They played vital role in the economic growth of the Chalukyas and Rashtragudas. The people who involved in commercial activities were known as the Vaisya community. But Alburuni says that the duty of the Vaisyas was to practice agriculture and to cultivate land to tend cattle. During the Chalukyas and Rashtrakuta period, the Vaisyas were generally described as artificers and domestic workers. The Rashtrakuta inscription refers to a section of Vaisya community known as Mahajana who were very powerful community. They were the, the land owners that controlled the, the administrative as well as the social life of the people in village level. The Mahajanas were very powerful community in the Rashtrakuta period. They supervised, they controlled the all administrative activities under the direct control of the king. It would thus appear that the Vaisya community held on honored position in the framework of the Hindu social system. Next in the Varna concept, the fourth category was the Sudras. In Hindu social hierarchy, the Sudras were occupied in the last category. Serving to upper three Varna was the foremost of duty of the Sudra Varna. According to observation of Alberuni, the Sudra is a like servant to the Brahmin, taking care of his affair and serving him. They were not allowed to prayers, the recitation of the Vedas and offering sacrifices to the fire. According to Medhadi, a sudra was entitled to perform Bahayajna and religious sacrifices. Samadeva observed that internal and external purity qualified even the sudra for spiritual duties connected with gods Brahmin and ascetic life. Apart from the, the four principal castes, we have also references during the Rashtrakuta period about the Navayats. Apart from the Hindu, there were Muslim residents during the Rashtrakuta rule. They came from different parts of India. They settled in Rashtrakuta region. They became the a separate a social groups in the name of Navayats. The Muslim newcomers were called as Navayats in Rashtrakuta region. There are 
various opinion regarding the origin and meaning of the term nawayat in the arabic language the nawayat means backbone which signify unity mohammedan traders came to deccan and established their settlement in the rashtrakuta region they were treated with great consideration allowed to construct their religious places in the rashtrakuta regions the rashtrakuta they supported the other religious ideas and the promoted for the, the religious development of the other religious sect in the social life of the people of rashtrakuta and the the chalukyas especially the mahajanas occupied very important position in the society they had many responsibility in royal administration as well as in social functions in several cases grants were made to mahajanas mostly the mahajana were important people they controlled the the land grants activity of the the kings the donors required their presence and even they sought formal permission and approval from the mahajanas the mahajana were also involved in the collection of taxes in the matter of fixing or charging the taxes rent and etc they had voice in the royal court we have ample instances to to show that when fresh taxes were levied on the people the rate were fixed the mahajana of the agrahara villages were consulted they on the basis of the consultation with the mahajanas the taxes were fixed the taxes were distributed on the basis of the the demand of the the royal as well as the state now we discuss about the marriage system of rashtrakuta and chalukya period the marriage is the most important base of the whole structure of the society the early indian text mention a different forms of the marriages and different methods of the marriages on the basis of the early scriptures and early traditions eight forms of the marriages we get it from the early references in the social life of the people marriage is most important the early indian text mention the traditional eight forms of marriage the mahapurana of the period speaks about rakshasa form of the marriage we have evidence for such marriages among the martial community and royal families there are references to the swayamvara form of marriage during the rashtrakuta period in this system the girl of the royal family select their husband by herself marriage alliance between rulers of neighboring kingdoms and political rivals become more common during the time of the rashtrakuta so in the social life the society of chalukyas and rashtrakuta was divided into four caste mostly the brahmins were occupied in the top chatriyas were in the second category the vaisyas were in third mostly involved in the commercial activities the sutras were in the last category the mostly serving to three upper varnas was the the prime important duty of the the sudra varna now we discuss about the the position of women during the chalukyas and rashtrakuta period the women played vital role especially royal women they contributed much for the development of the state inscription of the period portrayed position of royal women some of the royal women holding administrative post as well as the a different post in the different regions under the rashtrakuta administration the princes are rarely seen occupying government post 
there are some instances we get from the inscription some of the royal women were involved in the administrative post during the rashtrakuta period the later chalukyas felt encouraged to follow the practice of giving responsibility to royal women ahadevi elder sister of jayasimha iii lakshmi devi the chief queen of the vikramaditya four and maila devi one of the queens of someswara were holding important administrative charges royal women were held in high respect and every care was taken to fulfill their desire the religious independence given to jain women had its consequence in other sphere of society we have also references to jain women who were distinguished themselves in literary field they also contributed for the development of literature and the culture of the drashtrakuta and chalukya period let's see practice of sadi during the chalukyas and drashtrakuta period sadi was practiced among royal family very few example of practice of sadi are noticed in chalukya and drashtrakuta inscription sulaiman a arab merchant of 9th century ad state that it was only sometimes that queens used to mount the funeral pyre of their consort it was entirely left to them to choose but alberuni observed that the wives of the dead kings were burnt with them whether they wished it or not an exception was made only for women of advanced year and for those who had children the inference that the practice of sadi was not so common in the deccan as it was in the northern india now we discuss about dress and ornaments of the people of both the dynasties in dress both men and women were wore very simple dress men wore two simple pieces of cloth a loose garment on the top and a garment worn like a dhoti for the lower part of the body the kings could wear turbans a practice that spread to masses much later in the historic period the women's clothes were very simple were well stitched and some wore petticoats uttraya or upper piece of cloth have been used by both men and women of the the dynasties flowers had largely used by the people in the everyday routine life from worship of the deity to the decoration of the person the people frequently used the flowers men and women were equally fond of them mostly both of them they are very much fond of the the various different kinds of the flowers now we discuss about the ornaments During the Rashtrakuta period we get enough materials to understand the various kinds of the ornaments which was practiced in the social life of the people many sculpture at Ellora and other places which represent a list of personal ornaments the artists of Ellora were at their best in carving an amazing variety of neck ornaments Your ornaments are illustrated in the Kailasa temple at Ellora. The figures of Parvati and Shiva in the Kailasa temple are depicted with ornaments having geometrical designs and floral patterns. This sculpture of the Chalukyas and Rashtrakutas period speaks of different kinds of the necklace, armlet and waist ornaments. let discuss about the food and drinks of the chalukya and rashtrakuta period the sources provide information on different kinds of food habits the useful food of the people consist of grain milk sugar and clarif- clarified butter and ghee 
They had good idea of quality and quantity of food intake. Meat eating was common among the people. Even we have the references of the Brahmins also had consumed the meat as the habit. Al Masudi says that the Brahmins did not eat the flesh of any animal. Al Buruni declared that the Brahmins had the privilege of eating flesh of Ganda. It was forbidden to the Brahmins to take five vegetables such as onion, garlic, and a kind of god, the root of plant like the carrot called trench, and another vegetable which grow around their tank called nali. Let's discuss about the social practices of the Chalukyas and Rashtrakuta period. In the social practices, many practices were important in the social life of the people. Dancing was the popular activities which entertained the people in the lesser time. Devadasis were often present in temple. They mostly perform in dancing activity in the temple precinct. Attending animal fight of the same or different spices is other recreational activity of the people. Hunting by royalty or recorded in the inscription of Govinda III. Astronomy was well developed and so was astrology. Jains showed interest in astrological predictions and metaphysical beliefs in their social life. Old people suffering from incurable disease preferred to end their life by drowning in the sacred water of pilgrimage, sit or by burning themselves during their last days. A number of superstitious beliefs were also practiced in the social life of the people. Now we come to religious aspect of the Chalukyas and Chola period. Especially the religious practices under the Chalukya period, both Saivism and Vaishnavism flourished. The members of the royal family were mostly devotees of the Shiva or Lord Vishnu. Famous temples were built at Patadakal, Aihol and Mahakuda. Priests were invited from northern India. They were asked to settle in the nearer temple of the Chalukya and Rashtrakuta period. Vedic sacrifices, Vrata and giving of Dana was important in the religious practice of the, both the dynasties. Sculptures of deities testify to the popularity of the Hindu gods such as Vishnu, Shiva, Shakti, Ganesha, Kartikeya, Surya and other Hindu gods. The Chalukya kings performed Ashramedaya, Vajbei sacrifices and other sacrifices. The sacrificial form of worship was prevailing and pranic deities rose into the prominence in the religious life of the, the people. Like the Chalukyas, Rashtrakuta also supported the popular religious ideas and the traditional spirit of religious tolerance. They built renowned Jain temple such as Lokapura of Bahalgol district. Scholars have suggested that Jainism was a principal religion at the very heart of the Rashtrakuta empire. So the Rashtrakutas were a strong supporter of the Jainism as well as the, the Buddhism in the Deccan regions. However, Rashtrakuta kings had patronized Hinduism and follower of the Shiva, Vishnu and Shakti faith. Almost all the inscriptions begin with an invocation to God Vishnu or Shiva. An early copper plate grand of Tandi Durka shows an image of Shiva which symbolically indicates the Tandi Durka was the strong believer of the 
Siva faith. The king's title such as Veera Narayana shows their Vaishnava faith. Buddhism popular in Rashtrakuta period. There are many examples we find in the Buddhist literature how the Rashtrakutas promoted the Buddhism and Jainism faith. Islam also became very popular during the Rashtrakuta period. There were many trade contacts between the Rashtrakuta region to the Arab countries and other Muslim world. Islamic contact began as early as 7th century AD as a result trade between the southern kingdom and Arab lands flourished. There are many sources which link the trade relation between the Rashtrakuta and Muslim world. Many Muslims settled in Rashtrakuta dynasty, constructed their religious places in the Deccan regions. Muslim settlers married the local women. Their children were known as Mopilas or Moplas. They actively involved in horse trading and manning shipping fleets. Now we discuss about education during the Chalukyas and Rashtrakuta period. Education was well developed and organized institution during the both the dynasties. The Rashtrakuta rulers paid much attention on the promotion of education. Rich trading communities also made donation for the establishment of educational institution and their maintenance. We have abundant evidences to show that the arrangement for higher education for the learning of Sanskrit and other Vedic texts, grammar, astronomy and astrology, Mimamsa, Dharma Shastra, Puranas, logic, Tandra, literature and painting, sculpture, music and drama and other related subjects. Mostly, the education played vital role in the promotion of the, the cultural value of the, the Rashtrakuta and Chalukya period. During the Rashtrakuta period, three kinds of the educational institution existed. Like Madas, Agrahara, Gattikas were very popular educational institution which were familiar in the promotion of the, the Hindu tradition. The Madas were associated with temple. The Agrahara were the Brahmin settlements. There are several instances, villages or village were granted as an Agrahara. The Gattikas were also represented on educational institution provided mostly higher education to the student of the higher Varnas. Mostly lands were donated to the establishment and maintenance of mothers. There existed a mother at Heppel in Darwa district of Karnataka and other reasons. The royal, the patronage which encouraged the establishment of the mother institution, the mothers played vital role in the promotion of the education and the culture of the Rashtrakuta and Chalukya period. Now we discuss about the literature under the Chalukyas. Badami Chalukya period, Sanskrit literature was being studied and cultivated in enormously. During the Badami Chalukya period, Sanskrit literature was being studied and cultivated. Inscriptions shows the strong influence of classics on the literary and epigraphical composition of the period. The Aikol inscription of Puligesh in second, written by his court poet Ravi Kirti in Sanskrit language and Kannada script, it's considered as a classical piece of poetry. Famous writers in Sanskrit, Vijneswara from the Western Chalukya period, wrote Midakshara, a book on Hindula. King Someswara III, a noted scholar, 
who compiled an encyclopedia of all arts and sciences called Manasolasa. This is example of poetry on stone at the Mehudi temple of Aikol inscription dated 634 AD in Sanskrit language and old Kannada script. Literature under the Chalukya period. From the Badami Chalukya period, references are made to the existence of Kannada literature. We have large number of the evidences in the literature as well as the inscription for the promotion of the, the Kannada language and literature. Kappe Arabatta record of circa 700 in three lines meter is the earliest available work in Kannada poetics. Karnada Eswara Kada, which was quoted later by Sayakirti, is believed to be a eulogy of Pulikesin II. Turvinida considered to have been equally proficient in Kannada and Sanskrit literature. Other celebrated Kannada writers whose works are very familiar in the Chalukya period. The beginning of Kannada literatures as prominent literary tradition we can see from the Rashtrakuta period. This period effectively marked the end of classical Prakrit and Sanskrit era. Court poets and royalty created eminent works in Kannada and Sanskrit literature. Bilingual writers such as Asanga gained recognition. Mahaviracharya wrote on pure mathematics in the court of King Amohavarsa I. Kaviraja Marka by King Amohavarsa I is the earliest available book on oratory and poetics in Kannada language. Jain writer Adikavi Pamba considered as the earliest and greatest of the Kannada poets. Punna is another famous poet patronized by the King Krishna III and famed Sandipurana. This is the account of the life of Sandinada, the 16th century Jain Tirthangara. He earned the title Ubaya Kavi Chakravarti for his proficiency in Kannada and Sanskrit literature. His other works also very popular in Kannada language. Mostly the royal patronage, the royal supported for the promotion of the Kannada script and language by the royal support. The Chalukya and Rashtrakuta rules witness certain changes in socio and cultural life of people. The social life was carried on along tradition lines. Caste was universal and hereditary in nature. Towards the end of Rashtrakuta rule, intercaste marriages and interdining, Buddhist reconversion into Hinduism, Vradas, regional subcaste, associating dancing girls with temples, the practice of sadhi began to enter into the society. However, we find communal harmony and religious tolerance throughout the Rashtravada empire. People had different faith such as Saivism, Jainism, Buddhism and Islam and several minor sects and cults were living together with mutual understanding. To sum up that, the period of the Chalukyas and Rashtrakuta very much influenced in the lifestyle of the, the people. We can find many changes in the socio and cultural life. In the social changes, many new communities were emerged. In the cultural aspect, new idea of in art and culture, new ideas in the promotion of the religion and the literature is emerged. 
So, the Rashtrakuta and Chalukyas were the very powerful dynasty. They promoted art and literature and the educational system. They contributed much for the development of the culture and the art in the Deccan region. Thank you for watching the video. For further information, you can visit EPG Padasala.